The following program is designed to demonstrate simple workouts that you can use to improve your health. Be sure to consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. Stay tuned for Body and Spirit. Today we're going to talk about a very controversial topic, and that is eating disorders and exercise. Hello, I'm Dick Nunez, Wellness Director of the Black Hills Health and Education Center. Welcome to Body and Spirit. It's been very sad for me to see the condition of a lot of the young girls of our society. They're obsessed with the fact of being pencil thin, and they'll do anything to get that way, whether it's totally avoiding eating anything or doing the bulimia thing where they're causing themselves to purge whatever they eat, taking laxative, diuretics, starving themselves down. It's a very sad situation, and a lot of it has to do with trying to control situations of their life. They don't have peace within their heart, and they're trying to find some way of gathering their equilibrium of their life. So we're going to be talking today about some things that would do, to do with eating disorders, and we're going to talk about exercise as well and how that plays a part in it. We know in the Bible it says that all things that we do, whether we eat or drink, it all should be done for the glory of God. Too often we get locked into doing things for our own self, and if we keep our focus on Christ, Great things can happen for us. So let's get started here. And today helping me out is Nicole. And Nicole is a, a good assistant for me today. And we talked a little bit before we came on, but Nicole has battled anorexia before and has overcome it and realizes that it is a lifelong battle, knows that it's still there, but she claims the promises of the Lord and, and by, by his grace, she's had victory and is going to keep claiming that victory because we know in our life that when we think we've got it whipped, then we know we're in trouble. I always hate it when an alcoholic says, oh, I've got it whipped. I'm not going to drink ever again. I, I feel sorry for them because I know they're going to fall again. So when we know we're weak, and the Bible says that, in our weakness are we made strong. So we're going to claim that strength, and we're going to go boldly forward. So let's loosen up a little bit. Nicole, we're going to just swing the arms around. You're going to get personally trained by me today, so we're going to have a lot of fun. At least I am. I don't know how much fun you'll have. <laughs> okay, now let's go the other way. You just want to loosen the body up so we're ready for action, whatever it is we're going to do. Okay, and five more. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. And what we're going to do is we're going to get in a prayer position here. And we're going to press our palms hard. Okay. Now what we're going to do is rotate. We're going to push them out. And we're going to draw back. And push out. And draw back. You want to keep the pressure on the hands at all times as you're pulling back and pushing out. Okay. Keep going. I have found in my life that as we train people with eating disorders that exercise is another way that they can take control of their life in a positive venture because if you're starving yourself down and you're causing yourself to lose vital tissue, it's going to be totally counter counterproductive to training. And as we feel so much better by training, then it gives us a different focus in our life. It takes it off of the abstaining from food totally or the purging aspect. Okay, now we're going to turn our hands back into prayer position. We're going to push over to the side. Back the other way. Good. We want to be focusing on the chest muscles as we do this. Okay, we're going to go five more each way. There's one. And two. And three. And four. And five. Good. Now get back to the center. Now we're just going to push hard. We're going to hold that for about a 10 second time count. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Good. Okay, Nicole, I want you to kneel down in front of me here. And you're going to bring your arms up like this. Okay. Now, for those at home, if you don't have a training partner, I'm going to be Nicole's resistance today. But if you have a training partner, they can do what we're doing here. Or if you need to use a towel or however you want to do this, um, you can modify it. Okay, push your elbows down towards your side. Okay, push down, all the way down. Okay, now resist on the way back up. Good. Okay, push. So what I'm doing is I'm being her resistance as she goes through the range of motion. Push. Good. And back up. And push. And back up. Good. Again, push. Okay, push. Okay, we're going to try to do five more. Push. What I'm doing is I'm trying to give her enough resistance that can, she can feel like she's doing something, but I'm not trying to make it a struggle of strength to prevent her from doing the exercise. Two more. And last one. Okay, good. Okay, come on back up. Now you're going to reach your arm over the, over the head. We're just going to stretch the muscle we just worked. Okay, good. You want to feel it stretch right into here. Excellent. Hold that stretch. Okay, relax. Go to the other side now. Good. Just going to feel that stretch right into there. Okay, good. All right, come back to the center here. Okay, we're going to raise our arms out to the side now, and I'm going to give you the resistance. Okay, and back down. And up. These are lateral raises. You can be using some cans or some Clorox jugs or some dumbbells, whatever you want. Or you can just do them manually with no weights at all. So I'm adding, oh, probably about five to 10 pounds of pressure on each side of Nicole's arms on the way up. And I'm probably pushing just a little harder on the way down because usually we're stronger on the negative or the eccentric part of a contraction. Okay, we're going to try and do 10 more. Shoulders are a very important area for our posture and just our overall cosmetic appearance. Obviously, those battling with eating disorders are very concerned about how they look. And by doing these type of exercises, we can actually sculpt the body to take on a different contour. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to talk a lot of times about using his body as as a, a, a artist would use clay. Okay, now hold that there, and I want you to hold that. Resist against me. Okay, keep holding for 20 more seconds. Hold, good. You're doing wonderful. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Okay, does that feel all right? Feel your shoulders a little bit. Okay. Bring your arm across. You feel that stretch in the shoulder? Okay, good. Now switch. Okay, good. Let's relax. Now, Nicole, what we're going to do is we're going to take our hand palms up, and we're going to put our other hand on the wrist, and we're going to curl the arm up and push back down. Now, we dictate how hard we want to work. So if you really want to put something to it, you can. You can make it a real tug of war with yourself if you want. But if you're just mainly interested in the toning aspect, then I would encourage you just to go through a range of motion. And let's do five more. Just one, two, three, Four, and one more time. Five, good. Okay, let's go to the other side now. Okay, curl. Want to get good full range of motion each time. 
Arm all the way down, curl it up. Feel the bicep do the work. Okay, there's nine and ten. We've got ten more to go. One, two, three. Well, it's important to keep those palms up as we do this. And five more. One more. Good. Starting to feel that a little bit? All right, good. Get you warm after a while. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite muscle area. And by doing this, we're going to take our, our palm up. We're going to put our fist into it as we're driving it down. We're going to have the elbow into the side. We're going to push all the way down. You might have to get your elbow out in front of you just a little bit to get that good full extension. And what we want to focus on is the muscle back here. Give yourself good resistance as you push. Good. Let's keep it going. Seven. We're going to try and do 20 again. Once again, we will control how hard we want to work. If you want to make it a tug of war, that's fine. For those who are a little more advanced or want to give yourself an extra push, by all means do that. Really work yourself hard. Four more. And last one. Okay, good job. Okay, let's go over to the other side now. Okay. Oftentimes it's good to do the weak side first so that when we go to the strong side, we just match what we've done. That'll help us to get our muscular balance Ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. Good. Just shake the arms out. Okay. Now we're going to do some lunges out to the side. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to step out to the side. Okay, and now we're going to rotate over to the other side. So we should feel it in the hips a little bit. We should feel it in the inside of the thigh. And we're also going to feel it in the legs. This will do two things. It somewhat loosens us up for our, our leg workout. Plus, it works on the flexibility aspect, especially through the inner thigh. Okay, we're going to try and do five more each way. There's one, two, three, four, and one more time. Five, good. Okay, now we're going to do some, some uh, partial squats. We're not going to go down very deep. We're just going to do a, a uh, moderation of that. We're going to Turn the toes out slightly. We're going to have the shoulders, the feet are going to be a little wider in shoulder width. We're going to cross the arms, and when we squat down, we want to focus on pushing our hips back. We're going to keep our chest up. We don't want our knees to go over the feet. We're just going to sit back like this, and we're going to go down about a quarter of the way and back up. But we want to try and stop just short of lockout. So we keep the tension on the thighs. We're going to try and do some good repetitions here. Usually a good set of exercise will last for a minute or two. So we're doing some short squats here. So we're gonna do, well, we may do as many as 50 of them. We'll see how it goes here. <laughs> if Nicole doesn't faint first. There's 12. Now for those at home, if you need to stop, that's okay. If you wanna go deeper, that's okay as well. For those who have been doing this along with us for quite a while. We've been working out fairly regular. We like to try and personalize the workouts and try and reach as broad a variety of people as we can, whether you're male or female, young or old. Hopefully the workouts have something for everybody.
Okay, and I believe we got 20 more to go. Yeah, how about that? But you're doing great, though. Just want to focus on pushing those hips back each time. Sometimes people don't trust my count, but we'll <laughs> try and do the best we can here. Okay, we're looking good. See how nicely synchronized we are? Four more. Okay, on this last one, we're going to try and sit down and just hold it there. And we're going to try and hold it for 30 seconds if we can. Oh, boy, I know. This can be a killer. Okay, there's 10. And there's 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good. Good job. Okay, I want you to lay down on the floor there on your side. Would you head up this way? Okay, and I want you to reach back and grab your ankle here and pull back and stretch the quadricep. Good. Anytime we work the muscles, we also want to stretch out. You okay there? Okay, good. So you want to feel a nice, steady stretch there. It's very important because if we lose that ability to pull the heel up to touch the buttocks, then we restrict our knee movement. So we want to make sure we keep that good flexibility there. Let's hold it for five more seconds. Okay, let's flip over to the other side, grab a hold of the ankle, and pull. Okay, and you might want to go back just a little further because it looks like you have pretty good flexibility. Well, not too bad, good. Okay, and hold it for 10 more seconds. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, lay on your back. Okay, I want you to bring a leg up. Okay, and I want, can you get a hold of your ankle up there? Okay, and pull back towards you. Nice, steady stretch. She has her knee bent just slightly, and that's okay. In fact, if you need to, you might have your knee bent even more as you reach behind the thigh and pull it towards you. She's got pretty good flexibility, so she's able to make a good pull from the ankle area. Okay, five more seconds. Okay, put that leg down. Now the other one. Okay, again, we want a good steady pull. Whenever we deal with eating disorders, we always want to be very encouraging the person going through there. It's, oftentimes it's easy to think that, well, they know that they're starving themselves, they should just change it. Well, it isn't that easy. Oftentimes in life, we get involved with a behavioral pattern we wish we didn't have. The reality is we struggle, and we need to be understood as we're going through that struggle. Okay, relax. Okay, now we're going to do some abdominal crunches, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring the feet up, good, and we're going to put the hands behind the neck to avoid hurting the neck. We don't want to grab the head or just let it dangle. We're going to put it behind the neck, and the way we're going to do crunches is we're going to just come up. It's just a very short range of motion and we're gonna blow out as we come up and try and lift your chin towards the ceiling as you come up. That's excellent, good, keep that going. Oh, you've got wonderful form on that. You must have done these before. Lots of them, okay, good. Well, that's good to know. So I can, I can, uh... oh, it's been a while. <laughs> well, it's too late now. <laughs> okay, six more in that position. Two more. Okay. Bring the feet off the floor and cross at the ankle. Okay, let's go 20 more. Now for those at home, if the other ones were difficult enough, then by all means just keep the feet on the floor. For those who are more advanced, then keep on going like we're doing here. So I was saying earlier, those who do have anorexia or bulimia need to be understood, need to be accepted, need to be able to feel like they can tell the truth whether they're having a struggle or not, so that those who love them can be supportive and be able to talk to them and find out what they're thinking about while they're going through that process and see if 
there's things they can deal with. Unfortunately, and this is very hard for family members to cope with, oftentimes the problem has something to do with one of them and some control issues. A lot of times it's a daughter to one of the parents or even siblings. So things like anorexia and bulimia, it's not just so easy as saying, you know you shouldn't be doing that, so don't do it. It's very hard for them. Okay, let's put the legs up straight. Okay, keep going, 20 more. Because the reality is they know they shouldn't be doing that and also they don't want to do it. They've lost this image of themselves and so what we're trying to do by exercise is create a new self-image and for those who are battling this, and we had a young 17-year-old girl just come out to our center recently who was battling bulimia and we got her into a really good exercise routine and, and this has been about three or four months now and she's still staying purge free as she has developed a whole new life in exercise but also realizes the tendency is still there. Unfortunately, it's kind of like a light switch. It's still there, it wants to turn on. Okay, did you get 20 more there? Okay, turn over on your abdomen now. Now we're gonna stretch, the, stretch those muscles out. I want you to just lift up, push up on your hands, but keep your pelvis down. Good, and just feel the stretch there. Excellent, you're doing great. Okay, now go ahead and lay back down. Put your hands behind your back. Now we're going to lift the chest up off the ground and back down again. We're going to try and do 20 of those. And this is to counterbalance what we did with the abdominal. Nicole's got excellent range of motion here. This also ties in the gluteal area for what, what we were working with, the low back and gluteal area, because we, when we do the squats, that's a good compound movement that works the entire leg, plus it brings a lot of gluteal work into it. And so now by doing the back contractions here, we just accentuate that. Now if you have a bad back or some type of herniation, then you want to be careful on this exercise, but you might want to make sure that it's okay for you to do. If it's done slowly and correctly, it should not be a problem. How many have you done there? 20, okay, good. Thought, I, first I thought you weren't sure, and maybe you want to do some more, I wasn't sure. Okay, now we're gonna do some calf work, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it on the edge here. I want you to come back to the edge, and you're gonna put your hand on my shoulder because I don't want you to fall off. Like that. <laughs> Step back up there. Okay, and let's go up and down. For those at home, you might want to use a block of wood or use a stair. You can just hang on to the banister or to the wall as you go up and down. Or find the buddy system like we're doing here. Ten more. As you can see, she's getting a good range of motion there. We want the heels to go beneath the platform and way up high. Good. This is an excellent exercise, especially for women, because women do tend to wear elevated heels still, even though some of the fashions have changed. I don't see so much of the spike heels anymore, but still I see a lot of women wearing high heels, and they lose that flexibility of that Achilles tendon area. Okay, is that it? Okay, now we want to stretch those muscles out. So we're just going to step back and press the heel to the ground. You want to feel it stretch in the back of the leg down to the calf area. And we're going to hold that for about 10 more seconds. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll switch over. Okay, press that heel down again. Remember, you don't want to bounce into your stretch at all. You just want to hold it statically, hold it in one spot there. But you want to feel it stretch. Whenever you do stretch, you want to stretch just enough where you feel that you're getting to a point where you don't want to go too much further, but yet it's taking you to a good range of motion. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, good. Now we're going to just, we're going to loosen up the upper area. and We're just going to stretch out up there. We're just going to shrug the shoulders around. Make nice circles. We're going to do that as part of our cool down. Four more. Okay, now let's go the other way. That's good. Keep it going. And 
three more. Okay, good. Now we're going to turn our head to the side. Just feel the next stretch and turn. And turn. And turn. And turn. Again, turn. And two more each side. And last one. Now we're going to do the trunk and turn and turn and turn. Good. We just want to feel that twist in our waist. Remember, we don't want to do the side bends. It tends to thicken the waist. It's amazing to me how many people I see in weight rooms with using they already got big waist and they're taking incredible heavy dumbbells and they're, they look like a big tippy bird going back and forth, they're side to side. And, and uh, the reality is they think they're shrinking themselves down. They think the more weight they use, the better it's gonna be when just the opposite is true. Let's do two more each way. And good. Okay, thanks a lot, we're all done. Go ahead and go on back. When we deal with problems like anorexia nervosa or bulimia, we have to remember it's like an addiction. And most of us know what it's like to be addicted to something in our life. Unfortunately, as Christians, oftentimes we know what Paul's talking about in Romans chapter 7 when he talks about the struggle with sin, doing things he wished he didn't do at all, but yet he keeps on doing it and refers to himself as a wretched man. But he also says, thanks be it to Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to say, there's no condemnation left for those in Christ Jesus. And you know, as we look at our lives and if we realize that we're totally accepted and totally loved by God, regardless of what's wrong with us, and if we feel that love and acceptance, I always have this philosophy that I teach our wellness guests, you can only succeed when you feel free to succeed. If you feel like you have to do something because people are putting these unrealistic expectations on you, then it's very difficult. Or if you feel like somebody's gonna judge or condemn you. But if you feel free to succeed, then you truly can. And with the Christian walk, we can have that. We claim the promises of Philippians 4.13 that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Claim that promise and incredible things will happen for us. God bless you. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you next time.